So I'm going to talk a little bit in these videos about building 3D models for WPF. Um, really just uh, sharing my experience of having gone through the process of creating a, a 3D uh -huh. model for the purposes of a little demo application, trying to replicate something along the lines of the product viewer that we saw as part of the Tesco.com demo at the PDC. And you can go and look at that video on the um, PDC website or on the Channel 9 website. There's a more detailed version of it. One of the things they did was to have a, a 3D model of their uh, the product the customer was looking at, allow them to sort of spin it around in, in space and inspect it through 360 degrees. And um, in order to do uh, to, to try and create this demo, one of the first things that I needed was a 3D model. Now, of course, you can go and you can buy um, 3D models and download models from, from various sites. But I think it's important to understand that you can create your own models. It's not rocket science um, as required. And uh, so I opted to build my own model using a tool called Blender. Now there are lots of 3D modeling tools out there. There is a tool called Zam 3D that specifically is designed for producing XAML uh, for WPF to uh, consume. I opted um, for Blender, one, because I don't do a lot of um, 3D work and Blender is free. And secondly, uh, because I noticed that on the Codeplex website, we have a XAML exporter for Blender. So I could take my Blender model and run it through the XAML exporter and generate the XAML that I can bring straight into WPF. Now, as it turns out, that wasn't actually the technique I used, but it is a valid technique. I will show you in these videos um, an alternative technique that you can uh, use using Expression Blend. So here we are in the Blender workspace here. This is the sort of design surface on the left here. On the right hand side, we've got a hierarchy view of my objects in my world. Down the bottom, there is another window which allows me to apply certain modifiers and make modifications to objects in my scene. There is a menu associated with my design surface down at the bottom of the design surface there. And up at the top, we've got the sort of global menu and uh, hidden in a panel at the top here, we have the sort of environment options that you can set on, um, on Blender. Now, we're currently looking at a cube in Blender here. I can zoom in using the, uh, the mouse wheel. There's also uh, in the scene here, a lamp illuminating my cube and a camera. And the camera is the perspective from which we'll see our objects, our world when we render the, uh, the scene. This panel here is a, a sort of detailed view of the dimensions of the currently selected object. And I can switch the views uh, using the numeric keypad. So at the moment we're in the front view, I can switch to the right view, the top view, etc., using keys on my numeric keypad. And also, if I hold down the um, middle mouse button, then I can sort of take a trackball view moving around the 3D space and see how my uh, object looks in that, um, in that 3D space. Now, Blender is a very rich product. Um, and I'm certainly not going to be able to explore many of the features in this, uh, these short videos, but uh, hopefully I'll give you an idea of the sort of essential elements required to build a simple 3D model. Now to create our yogurt pot, a cube is probably not the best starting point. So let's get rid of our cube and instead add in a new object, press the space bar will bring up a menu to add a new mesh and that uh, mesh I want is a cylinder and I'll just select all the defaults. And I like to, as far as possible, have objects positioned at the origin when you should bring them into WPF and it makes it uh, life much easier when you're working with things like rotations and uh, transforms, etc. So to get our cylinder to look a little bit more representative of a yogurt pot, we need to elongate it and also give it a sort of conical shape. Now, there are various different ways that you can uh, approach this. My preference in, uh, in Blender is to scale this object, first of all. So if we have the object selected, press the S key, it allows us to scale it. And if we then follow that by the axis key, so I'll press the Z key, I can scale this in the Z axis only. So let's scale it say to about there. And to make it conical, I can scale one of the ends of the cylinder to provide that cone shape. Now the way to do that is to switch into 
edit mode and I can do that with the tab key and in edit mode I can see the individual vertices and I can use the B key to bring up a block selection so I can drag over those top vertices there and then again scale that hit the S key to scale and we can scale things out a little bit to make it look slightly conical as our yogurt pot might. Now also in our yogurt pot you tend to find a lip around the top edge where the uh, the seal is placed and one way to do that, an easy way to, uh, to do that I think is to uh, do something called an extrusion, extrude that surface that we're on, those vertices that we're currently got selected and if I hit E to extrude and select a region that means I can now take that set of vertices and extrude them and what I'm going to do is just extrude them upwards very slightly like so and then again scale this and scale it outwards so it looks a little bit like that lip that we're looking for and if I move it around in that 3D space we switch out of edit mode might be a bit easier to see you can see that we've now got that um, that lip and the other thing that you'll commonly find in a, a yogurt pot, this is possibly an unnecessary detail, but it's not very difficult to do, is at the bottom there's a sort of um, conical, con concave um, surface. So again, if we block select that bottom set of vertices and extrude them upwards slightly, say to about there, and then scale again and we just scale in ever so slightly like so and then again out of edit mode it just makes that pot look ever so slightly more realistic now the last thing i want to do to sort of round off our basic model is to add on the sort of typical transparent lid that you find on a yogurt pot to protect that that seal on the top now one way to do this is to Again, add in another cylinder. So spacebar to add a mesh and select a cylinder and OK that. Now I'm going to scale this cylinder. Um, in fact, let's move it first. Another way to, to move an object is to, to grab on these arrows as part of the, um, the object um, center marker. And uh, so if we scale that by pressing the S key and just make it big enough to cover the width of our uh, yogurt pot and then I want to scale it in the Z direction to make it significantly thinner let's make it something like that and we can move it uh, move it down again across now of course I've put a cylinder on there and that cylinder has a, a top and a bottom to it. We actually want to remove the, the base so that we can fit that as a, a, as a lid as it were. So if we just again switch into edit mode with the tab key and select that bottom side of vertices with a block select. I can then hit the delete key to remove, oops, hit the delete key to remove and I've got the option of selecting vertices edges I want to remove the faces and that will remove that bottom face from my cylinder and let's just show that that has actually happened there you can see hopefully that that bottom face has been removed and I should now be able to position this and let's position the x-axis at zero and drop that down and we'll want the y-axis at zero as well and then we can do a quick inspection front view right view they both look uh, roughly correct and if we zoom in a little bit and just have a quick spin around we can see that starting to look something like a yogurt pot and just finally although there's still some work to be done we can render that current frame and you'll see that's what our current model looks like for our yogurt pot.